So how do you build a dam to make sure that the overflow doesn't erode it away? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith, my wife Veronica behind the camera and I run Smith House Co. We are a develop design build firm out of Austin, Texas, and we are at the Monarch Woods today. This is a great 40 acre property out here towards Houston. And we've been so fortunate to be able to work with the owner from basically the time that they bought the land all the way through the development of the land, the design of the buildings, and now we're actually building the buildings on here. So. Having great clients is a huge blessing and privilege for us. And these guys, they're the tops. Today, I want to talk about this dam that we're standing on right now. I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I talked about how we use topography to draw this out before we actually dug it with the, uh, with the bulldozers and the uh, track hose and all the other equipment. And nobody really cared. Well, some of you cared. I don't care because I think it's cool, so I don't give a toot what YouTube thinks about what is cool. This is a follow-up video to that. So now, if you watch that video, you see how we drew it all out. We are actually on the dam that we made, and I want to talk about the overflow, how to design the overflow to make sure that the water fills up to where you want it to be, and how to also make sure that if the big rain comes, it doesn't erode away. It's pretty simple, really. Over here to the north side, we have got a low overflow, and this sets our the, the water level for our whole pond. This is the lowest spot in the pond that will start overflowing once the water reaches its maximum height. So the dozer driver set his elevations, and we knew that it was going to come right to the base of these trees over here. The pond's completely full today, and if it comes up just another three inches or so, it's going to start overflowing on this north side. But this north side can only take so much water. We don't want to start tra start pushing so much water through that channel that it starts eroding away because if that starts eroding away, we can start compromising the um, integrity of our dam. So we also have just about, oh, a few inches higher, not even a foot higher really, or maybe another three to four inches higher on the south side here, we have another spillway. So this north spillway sets our height and as soon as that can't keep up, then this southern spillway starts to go and on the on the far side of this dam on the south side of this dam um, it's just a big prairie so we can take just tons of water and move it across this broad wide it's probably 75 foot wide meadow that all of this water can travel down it just can it can carry way more water than all of the water that's coming down through the, the draws up to this point. So these two spillways act in, in tandem with each other. This one sets the height and is the initial normal spillway that will carry all of the normal flow of water from upstream. The southern spillway is our emergency spillway that will start getting utilized if we have a big rain event, the pond's all the way full and we're having to dump a lot of water back into the drainage ditch behind this pond, under the culvert and on downstream. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you an understanding of a way to build a dam without having any expensive concrete work spillway over the top because we could have taken it right over the top, but if we did that, we'd have had to build a lot of concrete and use a lot of riprap and it just isn't as good to have a channel coming over the top because you have erosion and the whole dam goes away. We much would rather push the water around the dam and have wide channels to keep that velocity low to keep erosion low. Thanks so much for watching. Make a comment below. Tell me what you think about dams. I don't know, share some cool pond inspiration with the rest of us. Go check us out over on Instagram at TikTok and we'll see you next time on Smith House bonus material for any of you pond nerds out there when we drew the topography that tree over there on that bluff was our control point we said man wouldn't it be great to have this tree with its feet in the water and that bluff that bluff was the original uh, the original seasonal creek dry creek that comes through here and so that that tree was already clinging onto that bluff and we said that would be great if that was right at the edge of the pond and it is who would have thunk? Pretty cool. Tell me when I'm out. <laughs>